Hi, everybody. Welcome to Rachel's Reviews. And oh, this is really exciting today. We are back with, <laughs> I don't even know what you call our, our show, but we have our show. And uh, <laughs> we are here to talk about the movies that we have watched uh, over the last couple of months. And the last time that we were together, me and David, was the day of the Oscars when we recorded last, which is so crazy. And, and so, <laughs> David, can you believe all that's happened since we last spoke? Yeah, I don't think either of us anticipated uh, the world turning into <laughs> what it's become uh, yeah. since we last spoke on a yeah. podcast. I mean, I think we would be making much more money if we did predict that. Oh, very <laughs> true. Yeah, if we, we, had... we could have saved a lot of people a lot of trouble. <laughs> Yeah, we really could have. Yeah, so since we last spoke, not only did Parasite win, which was so exciting, yes. but <laughs> the world fell apart. <laughs> so Pretty we got much. something really good, and then we got a lot of really bad stuff. <laughs> yeah, and our job became a lot harder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because uh, normally what we've done for, I don't even know how long, a long time, mm -hmm. every it's quarter, almost. yeah, we'll do a preview and then we'll do a wrap up of what we've seen. And, and it's really fun. I really enjoyed it. And, uh, and so we, uh, we couldn't really do our normal preview that we would have normally done for the summer, for the summer coming up, because we have no idea what's going on. Um, and we're thinking, how do we do our recap? Because it would have been fe February, March, and April. So we got a few, we, we got February in the theater. We had a few in March and then everything just kind of, you know, there was streaming and some stuff to rent and, and, uh, and other things. Uh, I've been able to go to the drive-in movie theater. We've had actually two drive-in movie theaters uh one is uh it was it's just a makeshift one that they did in front of mm -hmm. one of the local theaters which has been so nice uh and i saw um i saw et there i saw uh, dress park which was amazing our favorite <laughs> movie <laughs> i know one of my favorites too and back to the future so, so three of my favorite films. Uh, and so that was a real treat. Uh, and uh, they did very, very, very safe. You never left your car. It was as safe as you could get. Uh, and they're continuing to do it there at the Water Garden Theaters. If people are in Utah, um, check it out, support them. Because I think it's really great what they're doing. Uh, but then there's also the Redwood Drive-In Theater, which is a regular drive-in theater. You know, they, they operate from uh, May until uh, like September and uh, they hadn't opened yet, uh, but they just are opening just last week. So I'm going tonight to see a double feature of Trolls World Tour and the new Valley Girl movie. So <laughs> pretty exciting. And I know I'm so excited. I'm really, actually, I really am very, very excited. And then we're also doing a screening uh, for critics there next week of a, uh, some movie for Amazon that I can't, I can't remember what it was, but uh, they sent out the, the, the request and I was like, I don't even care what the movie is. Sign me up. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a super gore fest movie. Yeah. <laughs> with your life. Is. I think so. I think so. So yeah, it's, Oh, I mean, how have you been uh, handling quarantine? How have you been surviving? Yeah, I mean, I've been handling it. I've been working from home uh, for, gosh, a, about two months now. Um, so it, it's been an adjustment, uh, not being able to go see movies all the time. I know. Because um, that's my favorite thing to do. So, uh, And I haven't even been watching that many from home, surprisingly. But... Mm -hmm. Um, I've been doing these movie tournaments on my Facebook, which has been pretty fun. I, I do them twice a week and yeah. different themes each time. And uh, a bunch of my Facebook friends just come by and uh, help me vote on movies in the tournament. So I narrow it down from 32 to one. So yeah, uh, that's it's been, been pretty fun. Pretty fun. I've, I've participated in a couple of them. Uh, I still, I don't know about the comedy one. I, <laughs> <laughs> that was the most controversial yeah there's been a few controversies yeah. so, uh because spoiler alert back to the future one for best comedy of the 80s 
<laughs> and I like Back to the Future. I love it. It's one of my top favorite movies, but I don't really think it's that funny. Right. So yeah, I would and, not pick it as the greatest comedy of the 80s. <laughs> and we just had a similar controversy with uh, the best horror film of the first decade of this century, uh, Pan's Labyrinth one, which yeah. isn't really much of a horror movie. So uh-huh. It's pretty gory, though. Yeah. Yeah. I, at least though. that's one I would have actually seen. I, yeah. I didn't participate in that one because I was like, yeah, I haven't even seen <laughs> most of these movies. But, uh, but yeah, so I don't know. I've, uh, I, I've done pretty, pretty good about keep watching things. Of course, there's mm-hmm. been some series that I've watched. Uh, has there been any, any series that you watched that you got into or uh, mainly just Yeah, movies? I watched, I watched Little Fires Everywhere. That mm-hmm. was, um, I think that was only eight episodes. So it was pretty easy to watch, um, within a few days. So I really liked that one. Um, I've been watching a lot of my regular shows like Survivor, Winners at War. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've watched a, a few old seasons of Survivor as well. So. I think this will actually air on uh, on Wednesday, so I, it, it'll be on finale day. Do you do you have a winner pick? Um, I I think it's going to be Tony, and I hope it's going to be Tony, just because yeah. he's played such a good game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I think so too. I do. I, I I I I've enjoyed the season. I have my issues with some of the, th- the things they're doing lately, right. but but overall, it's been pretty fun. Been yeah, pretty I fun. agree. And part of me, like, I I really can't help but root for Natalie, even though she was voted out first. I just have always really liked Natalie. Yeah. I don't know how I would feel if she came back into the game and won, though. I know. I I'm. It's just it's. I, I guess if another extent, another extin- extinction island, if another of them wins, it's just a different game. Right. They've been playing a different game. Mm-hmm. They won a different game, and I guess I just have to be happy with that. But I don't know. I don't really. Yeah. It's frustrating. Uh, but uh, but I do like Natalie as a person, and at least they've actually had things for them to do exactly. on Edge of Extinction this time. They've actually had, I mean, it was before it was like, they're just on the island. Like, what? It was so <laughs> dumb. Ugh. But um, it's much better, at least this time. And it makes more sense this time because since they are our favorites, you kind of want them on screen longer right. than just, you know, one episode or two episodes or whatever. So I get it this time, but I still, I hope, I hope the ex- extinction doesn't win. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't I, I'd be annoyed but, but yeah I'm, I'm pulling for Tony hopefully Tony will win <laughs> do you think if well the last question on this, do you think if Tony wins is he the greatest ever I think if he wins he will largely be considered the greatest ever um mm-hmm. it's hard for me to say that I, w- I would definitely like consider him one of the best five yeah. players ever I think I'd consider him one of the best five players ever even if he doesn't win because mm-hmm. his first win was so unlikely and he mm-hmm. pulled it off so well and then if he were to win amongst all of these winners that says something i think for sure yeah Sorry. and i didn't think he had a chance coming back yeah yeah i know it's been, it's been really fun mm-hmm. uh so as far as series i loved the docu series called mcmillions I thought it was so entertaining. Uh, it's uh, it's about the uh, the scam that went on during the um, uh, the early two thousands. Uh, I think like ninety nine to two thousand three or something like that mm-hmm. um, uh, with the McDonald's monopoly game, and and it was just the cast of characters that get involved from organized crime to this like Mormon family to this like I mean just the craziest eccentric group of characters and then the the agent that they have looking into it Dominic Matthews is the best and just like I've I've rarely met I've rarely seen somebody on television that was so made for being on television like he needs his own show and <laughs> he <laughs> investigates he was so great he was such a it, it I really enjoyed it um I highly recommend it, it and it's like entertaining too because it's one of it's a scam show that 
has it's like a victimless crime nobody was really hurt by it like mcdonald's wasn't really hurt like there's no um and so it's it doesn't you don't feel as conflicted as you might on some of these other you know type of things and anyway so like money that was just going to be given away was given away to different people (laughs) like that's the worst that happened yeah um so I uh, I really loved that. I thought it was so good. And then I also I watched the Dark Crystal show, which was pretty pretty good. I um what else did I Did you watch Tiger King? I have not watched Tiger King yet. I okay. need to. I know. <laughs> You're like the only person <laughs> <know>. in the country. <laughs> I know. That's part of the reason why I kind of held off cuz I, <laughs> I don't know, it was just uh so much hype. Uh mm-hmm. but uh but yeah, and I don't know. I can't even think of anything else. But anyway, uh, you should definitely check out McMillions. Oh, I watched. I've been watching The Last Dance uh, on ESPN about the Bulls, and that's been kind of fun, especially since there's no sports at all. <laughs> I think we've all kind of uh, been watching that, and right. a, a lot of people. And they do good, such a good job with those ESPN films. They really do. And so I've been watching that. But. Anyway, so let's talk about first some of the movies that we saw uh, before <laughs> before the apocalypse <laughs> came. And uh, uh, so you saw Birds of Prey. Like there was talk that we, neither of us were going to see it. I still have not seen it. Um, and what did you think? Yeah, um, well, I always planned on seeing it, but uh-huh. I wasn't super impressed with the trailers. Yeah. Um, Luckily, I was super impressed with the movie itself. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I thought it was a lot of fun. It, it, it was very similar to Deadpool to me. Um, it was very like self-aware comedy, uh, kind of breaking the third wall a bit. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun. I, I think this is uh, arguably the best of the uh, DCU movies so far. Um, mm. It's not for everyone. I don't know if you would like it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun. I've watched it twice actually now. So um, yeah, this is something I'd highly recommend to most fans of superhero films. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oddly enough, my I actually have it on my Vudu because my my I share my account with my sister and brother in law, and mm-hmm. they rented and they bought it. And <laughs> first, I was like uh because they they have to reimburse me when they buy something as i saw it i'm like what on earth where did this somebody's somebody's hijacking my account because it didn't seem like something they would have bought and they were like oh no we got it (laughs) okay so i have it there (laughs) waiting for me uh they did they did like it uh so i i guess i should i should give it a shot but i'm just not super into harley quinn Right. the character she's not my favorite so. yeah and i do think she's the best part of it um they did kind of underutilize some of the other um parts of the ensemble i would say but um yeah she's great i, th- I thought Marble Ro- margot robbie was great in this so mm-hmm. this is actually my second favorite movie of the year so far i've only seen 30 Ooh, yeah but this is number two very good all right well a couple of these i saw at sundance that I've thrown in here. Um, so the one of them, it actually just just got released. Mine really aren't in chronological order, but um, I saw a movie called Spaceship Earth, which is a documentary. And I really was excited about it because it's bonkers about when they had this biosphere in the 90s and this is this documentary. And, and uh, these people were gonna, going to live in the biosphere for... Uh, I think even longer than a year was the original plan. And, you know, so they were making this documentary about this year of the biosphere and it sounded really entertaining and fun. And I love those kind of documentaries, but I thought they approached it just like the most boring way that they possibly could. It was like watching a textbook. I, and I mean, they have like even Steve Bannon, who is just like, a, was a Trump guy, he ends up becoming involved. So there's all this like crazy weird stuff, you know, that you think it's going to be super entertaining. But at least to me, I thought it was dry, dry, dry. And so I, I didn't end up caring for it 
at uh, really at all. I mean, maybe I was just tired from Sundance. I don't know, but I ended up, I have it at number 50 in my ranking. <laughs> 56 movies i thought it was so (laughs) boring (laughs) and it annoyed me because it was like this is such a crazy thing how can you make this so dry uh so it was disappointing (laughs) for me i'll I'll be sure not to watch that one yeah (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it seems to be getting pretty good reviews so what do i know um uh, yeah so then you saw come to daddy yeah, I saw it come to Daddy. Um, I went to an early screening of this at our Alamo Draft House, and it was followed by a Q&A with the director and mm-hmm. Elijah Wood. So um, oh. that was a pretty cool experience. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty interesting film. The trailer, I thought it gave too much away, but really the trailer is mostly from the first probably 30 minutes of this. Um, so there's a lot that... Uh, you're you you don't really expect going into this film uh, but yeah i had a lot of fun w- with this movie it was uh very over the top and uh some pretty graphic violence in this so it's not for everybody but um i, I don't know it's uh probably one of one of the my favorite dark horror comedies that i've seen in quite a while mm-hmm. um so i liked I the trailer i thought it yeah. looked it looked pretty good for what it was trying to be. Uh, so, all you, right. You might like it. I, yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, it might be worth checking out. For me, it's yeah. number three for the year. So. Oh, cool. Okay, then there was Downhill, which is a remake of a Swedish film, I believe. And uh, Swedish film is evidently hilarious. Uh, but I saw this also at Sundance, uh, Will Ferrell and Julie Louise Dreyfus. And I did not care for it at all. Uh, I thought that they were both really annoying (laughs) and she a little bit less so than he, but like, she's just making this huge deal over something that really doesn't feel like it should be that big of a deal. And so it makes her character feel really unlikable and it's just not funny. I mean, I didn't, I hardly laughed at all. And I, so I don't know. It, It was it was not for me. It was just unpleasant. Like, why am I spending time with these horrible people? Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I have it at 48 in my okay. ranking. Yeah, I never got around to seeing this. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so then we both saw Horse Girl. I saw it at Sundance. And <laughs> I am very curious to know what you thought of it. Okay. Yeah, so I went into this uh, knowing that Rachel hated it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, I don't know if that helped lower my expectations or not. I do like Alison Brie a lot, uh-huh. um, but I watched this on Netflix when it came out and uh, I thought it was okay. I did not think it was as bad as you. I thought it was very strange, uh-huh. um, but I was under- entertained for the most part. Um, it just didn't really go in a place that I expected it to or uh, in a place that I w- felt satisfied with. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I thought it was the pseudo sci fi mumbo jumbo, like really self important. And, mm-hmm. and what it was supposedly, I guess, saying about mental health, I didn't really like. And I hate that whole idea of like the person that's mentally, uh, mentally ill is like, uh, has like kind of superpowers, sort of, you know, in, in these type of stories. And I just, I, I, I just really disliked it. And I admit, I saw it at nine o'clock at the end of a long day at Sundance. I was really tired. I was frustrated. It was hot in the theater, you Mm -hmm. know, and so that all definitely, it does. (laughs) Like, and I was just so irritated with every single thing they did. And it just felt like that kind of indie film, you know, that can't just tell a simple story. They have to muck it up. (laughs) all this nonsense so yeah it was not for me i did not like it uh but i'm glad that uh i was very curious i I feel like it's such a weird fit for netflix very weird film i mean netflix 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 has a pretty diverse uh uh catalog i would say so i didn't find it too strange for netflix but yeah because i I think of like i think of like hulu or some of the other services as being a little more edgy Oh, than Netflix, sense, yeah. but but maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but 
I put this at 21 for the year. 21. How many do you have total? 30. Okay. That's Which bad. isn't saying a lot because I don't know if you remember, but I hated most of the January movies yeah. I saw. So <laughs> for me to not put this lower just means I didn't hate it. Yeah. Do you think that if you went to see some of those January movies now, because you had that, you haven't been able to go to the theater in so long that you would like be, you would feel better about them or do you think you'd still hate them the I, same? I think if I went to see them now, I would be like, uh, maybe I don't need to ever go see movies again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've thought about that though, that like my, <laughs> am I, I going to give like the first couple movies that I see back in the theater? I'm going to kind of give them a, a bit of a pass. Uh, I'm going to even think that tonight going to see Valley girl, you know, like I got to, <laughs> it's hard because your, your, your movie going experience is part of the experience, right. you know, of seeing a film. You can't just totally detach it from it, but true. But anyway, uh, so then I, and I can't remember if we talked about this previously, um, but I, I, there was Timmy Failure, Mistakes Were Made, and I loved this movie so much. I thought this movie was so cute. And little Timmy, <laughs> Timmy Failure, that he runs his detective agency, and he has this 1,600-pound polar bear that's his best friend. I, d I just thought it was the cutest movie I've seen in a long time. And I was kind of irritated with it because it took up a spot at Sundance. And I thought, how can you have a Disney movie at Sundance? Right. What is going on? And I still disagree with that. But, but it was in the family section. And now that I'd seen the film, it definitely has kind of an indie vibe. Some people describe it as Portlandia for kids. And I think that's actually pretty accurate. <laughs> he's very dry. He's very sarcastic. Wallace Shawn is, is, is his poor teacher. Uh, and <coughs> there's a scene with it. Craig Robinson plays his school counselor. And there's a scene where the two of them are talking about adaptability and, uh, and why sometimes you need to be able to adapt to new situations. And it was so sweet. It was so cute. And I don't know. I just really enjoyed this movie. It's my fifth favorite of the year. Okay. Yeah. You did briefly talk about it when you like recapped your Sundance oh, okay. experience. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I never got around to watching it, even though it's on Disney plus. Uh, yeah. I just haven't checked it out yet. So I, I just, to. I just can't imagine me not thinking it is just so mm -hmm. cute. It's just the, the cutest. So <laughs> anyway, so you got to see the lodge. I've heard good things about this. this yeah. I, for my horror friends. Yeah, I saw The Lodge, um, and it was a very similar experience to Come to Daddy. It had a Q&A with the directors and a couple of the stars of the film. So that was that was a pretty cool experience. I, I really wish I could do that with almost every movie, just have yeah. a Q&A right afterwards. Um, it, and it was a live stream Q&A. They weren't at my theater. Okay. So, um, just to clarify there. Um, but yeah, I had heard really good things about this before uh, seeing it. Um, I was slightly disappointed. I didn't think it was as scary as, um, as the hype had made it seem, but it definitely had an interesting concept to it. And it definitely kept me on my toes and kept me guessing. So I do appreciate that. Um, but yeah, it, it's enjoyable. It's something I'd watch again. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we have a mutual friend that has really been hyping it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and right. I don't quite agree with him, but I do I, I do have this in my top 10. Barely. Okay. It's number 10 for the year for me. How scary is it when you say 1 to 10? 1 to it's 10, scary. I would say... I would say other than a scene that comes kind of out of nowhere at the very beginning, which is pretty intense, um, I'd probably give it maybe a 6 or 7. Six or seven. Okay. Six. All right. So then we have To All the Boys. P.S. I Still Love You. This is a sequel to the first To All the Boys film on Netflix that got a ton of hype that I thought was, I liked it. It was cute enough, but I thought it was kind of overrated. There were some people who were saying it was one of the best teen comedies ever made. I'm like, slow down. It's not <laughs> that good. But it was cute enough. And I think Noah Centino is super charming and he's going to be a big star, I think. 
Uh, and so my problem with the first one that I thought it could have been better, even though I did enjoy it, was that I felt like Peter's character was kind of bland. He basically went along with whatever the, what other Lara Jean wanted. And I, I wanted more personality from him. Like in my rom-coms, I like the guy to be a little snarky sometimes. And I felt like they did a better job of that in this one, that we got a more fleshed out character. I didn't, I thought the lug triangle was stupid. It was completely unnecessary. It it could have been completely excised from the movie and it would have been better. Uh, And I know it's in the book, but nevertheless, (laughs) that's what I think. Mm -hmm. But there were some really cute moments uh, and I liked their relationship. So it is a pretty fun little, uh, you know, teen rom-com. And so I have it at 25. Okay. Right in the yeah, middle. I saw the first one. I never got around to watching this one, though. Yeah, it's cute enough for what mm-hmm. it is. Uh, so we both saw Shaun the Sheep, Farmageddon. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you think? Yeah, I, th- I mean, I, I thought it was uh, definitely cute. It wasn't... Um, I, see, I can't even remember if I saw the first one or not. I was about to compare it to the first yeah. one, but then I'm like, wait, did I actually watch that? <laughs> Um, I don't think I actually did watch the first one. So the first one's kept, really cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that might be the issue for me is that I kept hearing like such great things about the first one. So I was expecting this to be like incredible. Uh-huh. And it was it was serviceable. Um, it was it was a lot better than most January movies. Um, so yeah. by comparison, since this was just a couple weeks into February, um, I definitely liked it a lot more than those. I put it at 13 for the year. So it's kind of in the middle. I thought this was so cute. I really mm-hmm. enjoyed it. I mean, I love Ardman animation. I love what they do. I love the style of their animation. And uh, I love that little alien was so cute. And just the little sort of comedic set pieces and the feel of, of a, sort of a silent movie kind of that you got, like when they're ordering pizza and stuff like that was really fun. I, so I did enjoy it a lot. I have it at seven right now. Okay. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, it's pretty, pretty fun. It's my favorite animated film of the year so far. Um, yeah. I think same here. I, no, it's not. It's not my favorite. But the other two are close. I actually have animated films at seven, eight, and nine. <laughs> so, <Okay. laughs> so anyway. All right. Uh, then we have, and I wasn't sure, did we talk about Call of the Wild last time? Uh, I couldn't I remember. So. No, I don't think we did. Okay. So to call, I have Call of the Wild. And uh, so this movie, I, I, I was surprised at how kind critics were to it. To be honest, that it had a, that it was fresh and seemed like people genuinely, genuinely seem to enjoy it, mm-hmm. and so that's great for them. I I can't say I'm in that camp. I I think that uh, the I do think the CGI dog was distracting. I I didn't like that, and I thought Dan Stevens' character as this just mustache swirling bad guy was really bad. Yeah, probably the worst performance he's ever given, and that includes as the Beast, which I hated. <laughs> that. Um, so I, it, that was pretty bad, and I don't know. It just wasn't. I'm, I, I I guess I I don't know that there were some things about the book and like sort of classic storytelling that I can see why people enjoyed it. And it's certainly beautiful, beautiful wilderness, beautiful land and Harrison Ford. He's, he's doing his best, but I don't know that that CJ dog was so distracting and his dance team was so bad. I couldn't, I don't know. So I have a call of the wild at 46. Okay. Yeah. This did not interest me at all. I thought the trailer looked really bad. Yeah. I almost forced myself to see it, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was, like I said, I was surprised how nice people were about it. So there you go. If they hadn't spent so much, they would have been a decent hit. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so you saw Fantasy Island. Yeah, I did. Um, this got really bad reviews. I, it's not a good movie at all, but it entertained me. It was funny. Um it, yeah, I don't think it deserves the scathing reviews it's gotten. Um, it's probably something I'd never watch again. But um, yeah, it kept, it, it, it kept my interest and uh, it had some good twists along the way. So I, I would, I put this at 22. 
out of mm. 30. So mm. it's still pretty low, but yeah, yeah, not terrible. Then I saw the photograph and this is a dual love story. It has one in the modern time, one in the past time. It's um uh, the, uh, is Ray, I think is her name. Um, her mother uh, is uh, like, basically like a single mom and there's sort of her romance that she is kind of investigating because she finds this p- photograph uh, and it kind of leads her to maybe who her father is. And, um, but at the same time, she meets this journalist uh, played by Lakeith, Lake, Lakeith Stan, uh, Stanfield. Lakeith Stanfield. Lakeith, uh, and, uh, and anyway, they have a romance and I thought that they had huge chemistry. They were really good together. I thought the movie was really well made. It was beautifully shot. It was beautifully done. Um, so it was certainly enough for me to be entertained uh, by it because I like romances. I thought the modern stuff was a lot better than the past stuff. Uh, but overall, I thought it was a pretty pretty decent uh, um, romantic movie if you like that kind of thing and i thought they had such good chemistry which is what you need for this kind of story uh to work so uh i i have it at 18 okay yeah another one i meant to see but just didn't make the time for yeah they did a really good job with music and i really liked the ending the ending was very romantic uh, so, so let's talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. We both okay. saw that. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so, of course, this had this rocky production with the changing the design of Sonic. And thank goodness they did because it looked so much better. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but I just thought this was such a sweet little movie. I I really just, I thought that Sonic was sweet. I thought that that him and James Marsden was, was a sweet little friendship and... I don't know. The whole movie was just sort of cute and fun for me. I liked it. <laughs> I actually ended up buying it on digital because I just enjoyed it. And uh, I don't think it's some masterpiece or anything, but I thought it was a, a fun little sweet movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It was definitely better than I think most of us expected yeah. it to be about a year ago. Um, this is a very middle of the road for me, though. Like, it's good. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't say it's great by any means. It's not bad um it's it's definitely entertaining enough it's a good family film i probably would have liked it a lot more if i was a bit younger um Mm -hmm. so yeah this is almost exactly in the middle for me it's at number 16 yeah i kind of i have it at 15 i kind of put it as the same as a a hotel transylvania 3 or the Mm -hmm. angry birds 2 last year like uh, those kind of movies where i like i know they're not the greatest movie but they make me laugh enough they're cute enough i just enjoy them so uh, I'd put it in that camp. Yeah, that makes sense. That's fair. Yeah. Um, okay, so I saw a movie called Olympic Dreams, and this is an indie. And I was really excited because it was all filmed at the Seoul Olympics. Uh, and I love the Olympics, and there's not that many movies about the Olympics. And so a romance at the Olympics, that sounds so up my alley. Unfortunately, the, the, the movie really dragged. They, they, I, they, I guess they improv a lot of it. Uh, and they were kind of shooting it on the sly, I think, actually, in the Olympics, uh, at least parts of it. And so it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. It's not awful. I didn't hate it. But it was just, uh, it was kind of boring. Uh, and I didn't think they had, like, they had cute chemistry, but not enough to, it's Nick Kroll and Alexi Pappas is their name. And they, they, it wasn't, the script just wasn't tight enough. It wasn't funny enough. It wasn't cute enough. Uh, but uh, so it was it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be I have it at 42 mm-hmm. so uh, and then let's so let's talk about Emma so Emma of course based on the Jane Austen classic right. and I saw it three times in the theater oh, wow. <laughs> yes uh, and there was no screening for it so that's all uh, on my own uh, with Emma and I don't know I it's kind of thing that's sort of made for me I mean I love period pieces I love Jane Austen I I thought that it did enough to kind of be its own thing uh, with, with but also staying true to the source material um, I liked all the performances I thought Bill Nye was hilarious as her father it was so good I liked uh, all the production the costumes the, the I don't know I just I just loved it. It's my favorite movie of the year. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, this was one that I did not think I would like. I don't, I don't know if you remember that from yeah. our preview podcast, because I'm, I'm not necessarily a big fan of period pieces, especially if they take themselves too seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wasn't very familiar with the story of Emma, or at least that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I found out, oh, Clueless is based on the Emma. story of Emma. Yeah. And I love Clueless. So knowing that actually made this quite a fun uh, experience for me in the theater yeah. because I got to piece together, like as I was watching, I was trying to figure out, okay, so who in this movie matches up with Clueless? And it just kind of become a fun, became a fun game. And uh, yeah, I laughed a lot. I, I really enjoyed this a lot more than I expected. Um, great casting all around. Yeah. Um, great performances. So yeah, I put this at number five. Nice. Yeah. I loved Mia Goth as, as Harriet. I thought she did such a good job. Mm-hmm. And I also loved the lady who played Mrs. Elton. I thought that she was hilarious. Yeah. She was really good. Uh, and so, yeah, it was, it was just such a fun film for me. Um, okay. So then I saw an anime film called My Hero Academia, Heroes Rising. And I really liked the first movie out of My Hero Academia. Uh, and it's about these... Uh, these kids that are, it's kind of like sky high sort of, it's like a, a high school for superheroes and they have these quirks and, and, uh, and so then this is the sequel and they do a really good job in this series of, of filling you in. So you don't have to watch the television show in order to follow along with the movies, which I really appreciate it, And they don't all do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that if people had an open mind to anime, that my hero academia is by far the most like accessible and and like it's basically a marvel movie like it's these team ups of these of these uh uh these teens with these powers and and fighting the bad guys it's really fun i i think it's very the 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 only flaw with this one is the uh the climax which is a huge epic climax it maybe goes on a little bit too long to the point where you're kind of exhausted um but uh, i i really enjoyed this movie i thought it was really fun i have it at number eight okay so yeah i uh, didn't see yeah. this yeah so you saw guns akimbo yes I controversial did. one this one. Oh, is it I yeah guess i i'm out of the loop on that but um yeah this is a daniel radcliffe film um it's kind of an indie film but he um he's attacked by these guys and he wakes up and he has guns like nailed into his hands and uh he can't take them off obviously um and there's these people who are basically making him do things kind of like, kind of like he's a real life video game and he's just freaking out the whole time. It actually reminded me of a combination of the movie nerve. I don't know if you saw nerve. Um, uh, I've heard of it. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Okay. It was similar to that, but it had a lot of the stylistic choices of like Scott Pilgrim. Um, but it's not as good as either of those movies. It was a lot of fun. Like I enjoyed watching it. Um, You could tell it was kind of a lower budget film. Um, So that was a little bit distracting at time at times, but um, yeah, overall I I did enjoy myself watching it. Um, So I put this at 11 for the year. Mm, Good. Okay. Uh, so then we have I Still Believe, and uh, so I I gave this movie fresh. I think that for its target audience, I think that they will like it, um, and I think that the uh, cast, particularly Gary Sinise, elevate it. It's not a perfect movie. Uh, it's not as good as I can only imagine, which I think they did the same uh same movie i just first of all i don't think the song is as good as i can only imagine um and uh and there's some some drama in there with that they have with uh with them dating at the beginning and there's this other guy and some of some of the other stuff it was like i feel like they could have there were parts that were a little boring for me um and but then once they actually get to the actual sort of drama of what happened with his wife I, I thought it, it it worked pretty well, and there's a particular speech that Gary Sinise's character gives about uh, the trials and and tr- troubles of his life that I really stuck st- stayed with me, and uh, so it, it, 
I just barely gave it fresh. <laughs> it's not okay. the best, but it's for what it's trying to do. It's, I guess, serviceable. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This is one I was looking forward to watching. Um, I did not, I did not get to go see it before the theaters closed down here. Um, so that's a little disappointing. I was hoping it would be better than it was. I was hoping it would be even close to the same level as I can only imagine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll still probably check it out at some point. I was kind of confused on how they would incorporate incorporate his music into this movie because um, the whole story, from what I understand, takes place before he was ever famous. So right. And it all leaves. They try to do skull leading up to the, you know, writing I still believe. Oh, okay. uh, but uh, it's not as effective as right. as I can only imagine, which I think it is partly just because I can only imagine it's such a good song. Mm-hmm. And this song wasn't as good. But uh, it's, 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 if you like Nicholas Sparksian type movies, it's totally in that vein, even with the like, beachy romantic scenes and the <laughs> cancer and like whatever um so i have it at 29 okay so okay so Invis- the invisible man yeah what do you think so yeah this was a movie that I, I was hearing so many good things about uh right around when it came out mm-hmm. and luckily for me it didn't disappoint um i thought it was there was some great acting in this um elizabeth moss she did a great job of just like portraying a woman being tormented by somebody who's not there. Um, there were some good twists to this. Um, I know some people found them to be predictable. I didn't always find them to be predictable. There were some things that were, some that weren't. So um, I do like that aspect, aspect if it can keep me guessing a little bit. Um, yeah, some good horror elements. Um, I feel like this is the exact movie Universal has been trying to do with their Universal monsters. Um, I I don't think, I don't think the Invisible Man is Universal though. Um, Mm. I I think, mm, I think it is. Okay, maybe it is. Yeah, I think it is. Um, So yeah, this movie was really good, very well done. I think especially the first part of the movie. I think as 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 he becomes more visible, it becomes a little bit not as good. Um, But uh, but still, I especially that opening bit when she's trying to escape, I think is so well done. And Elizabeth Moss is great in the role. There's Mm -hmm. no doubt about that. Um, And so I have it at fourteen. I, okay. I I thought it was real solid little solid little thriller. Yeah, um, it is Universal and Blumhouse. That's what mm-hmm. I was thinking. I, I knew it was Blumhouse, and they're planning on doing more movies um, from the Universal monsters. So that's what was throwing me off there. Mm-hmm. Um, I have this at number four. Mm, so very good. High. Yeah, very good. Okay, then I saw My Spy, uh, which I was the last movie I saw at a critic screening. Uh, and this this movie uh it's it is actually like cuter than it looks um it's i mean you kind of know exactly what you're getting into when you watch a movie like this um the the thing about it is i don't think that dave batista is on that level where he can sell a movie like this uh just he's just not there yet as far as movie star appeal i feel like a movie like this uh you know we've seen uh, these type of movies with your Vin Diesel's, with your, um, you know, your Arnold Schwarzenegger's, your Sylvester Stallone's, people like that, and he's not at that level. He's not. Mm-hmm. He does not have the charisma. He doesn't have the acting. He doesn't have the, and so it's not awful. It's not as bad as it looks, uh, but it's not. I can't give it fresh on my spy. The little girl's actually really good in it um and uh they have some cute moments it's i don't know so i have it at 39 okay i'd probably give it a two and a half it's like right in the middle there a two and a half out of five (laughs) that's Um, kind of what i expected from it i i did not i I didn't think it looked great mm -hmm. yeah i mean i I thought it looked like a total train wreck (laughs) um and it's not but uh it's it's uh it's not you know it's not great it, it's a totally run through the mill thing we've seen a billion times 
and uh, the little girl is, I think, cute enough to, <laughs> to win it over. But, but yeah, Dave Batista needs to keep trying. He's not there yet, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so then we have Wendy. So you got to see Wendy. I saw it at Sundance. Yeah, um, I watched think? this. Yeah, I watched this pretty recently, and um, based on what you had said about it, I definitely lowered my expectations. Mm-hmm. I thought the trailer initially looked really good, mm-hmm. um, but I, I went into this pretty guarded, um, which was good because I didn't think it was terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, there were there were some elements to it that reminded me of. Uh, where the wild things are, which is one of my favorite movies. I love that um, movie too. Yeah, and um, I like that there was a balance of realism and fantasy. I was afraid that they would just go completely realism and take out all the magical elements. Mm-hmm. And luckily, they didn't do that. So I thought it, I thought they had a pretty good balance. Um, and yeah, keeping it pretty small budget. They managed yeah. to pull things off pretty successfully. So I thought it was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, I put it at 12. Oh, okay. I have it at 35. I did, or 36. I did go fresh on it though, barely. Okay. I gave it three out of five uh, stars. I I think that it is it is kind of overwhelming and exhausting. Uh, by the end, uh, they throw a lot at you. And mm-hmm. I don't know. I, and some of the stuff was a little bit, violent dealing with kids in a way and i don't know just a little bit shocking (laughs) um and but it also had that i could have used more whimsy it could have been a little bit more whimsical a little bit more fun um but nevertheless it was very creative i loved the way they used music the cinematography was beautiful Uh, it had really interesting ideas so it was it was certainly enough for me to recommend it um but uh but it, it was not the follow-up to Beast of the Southern Wild that I think a lot of us were hoping for. And maybe that's part of the problem, but it's certainly worth, I would definitely recommend anybody to watch it because it's, a, they tried a lot of things. <laughs> so, right. yeah. And and I thought it was mostly successful. I actually am kind of glad they didn't have a lot of whimsy in it. I, mm-hmm. I kind of like the serious take on this story Yeah, um, that seemed a little bit more realistic and, not like a kid's version, you know, mm-hmm. or a kid's story. Even though there are kids everywhere in this movie. And they yeah. were all very strong actors, I thought. So. Mm-hmm. They all did a really good job. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's a, it was an interesting one. I, uh, I'd i recommend anybody to watch it because it's very experimental. So then on Disney Plus, I watched the movie Star Girl, And I actually, I have this at 40, but I actually went rotten on it. Um, so it's right near that edge where I was halfway. Um, I, I have to admit, I didn't love the book. I had read this book. It's very Manic Pixie Dream Girl for teenagers. Uh, she's this kind of, is she an alien? Is she not an alien? She's this girl comes in to basically make life great for this kind of nerdy boy. That's the lead narrator. And I don't know. It was just pretty cheesy for me. And I, uh, not very good characters. Uh, they were kind of annoying to me, but it's not awful either. I didn't hate it. I was right on the edge on it. <laughs> <laughs> it had some cute parts, and I can see why its target demographic will like it. Anyway, I have it at forty. And I think I also gave it two and a half. I gave it two and a half stars. I think. Yeah, uh, for on, for some reason, off. I thought this was going to be a superhero film. Oh, because I think there is a DC Comics right. character named Star Girl. Yeah, and um, I thought, I just assumed Marvel, oh, yeah, they probably have one, too. So, and then I saw oh, the trailer. Yeah. yeah, I saw the trailer, and I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm not going to watch this. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so, you saw Extraordinary. I did, yeah. So, I think this is a British film about a woman who um, can speak to ghosts, uh-huh. and it has uh, Will Forte in it. Um Yeah, and I was hearing a lot of good things about this. Um, And yeah, I thought it was fun. It wasn't incredible. It was definitely like an art house comedy involving paranormal. Um, So if you like that sort of thing, I think that you will probably like this. Um, 
it's not amazing. With that said, I, I did like it enough to put it in my top 10. So I, I know I'm probably underselling it right now. That's mainly because of my expectations being a little too high when I went into it. But it's still a good movie. Um, so I put this at number eight. Mm, okay, cool. Uh, the, I, I heard about that one because uh, the local theater here, local indie theater, was streaming some movies that you could to help them out. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was one of them, but I hadn't had a chance to watch it yet. But I, I want to because I want to help them out. Yeah. So that's good to hear that it's worth a watch. Yeah, I think, I think it's something I could recommend to you for mm-hmm. sure. Okay. Then there was Love Wedding Repeat, and this is on Netflix, and I cannot rec- I cannot <laughs> recommend this movie. I will not recommend it. <laughs> I should say, I really hated this movie. I thought that it was so not funny, and just I just hated all the characters, and I it was vulgar and crude and unpleasant, and I'm not a big fan of wedding movies to begin with, even on Allmark. Uh, and I just, I really disliked it a lot (laughs) and it wasn't romantic at all. Um, I have it at 56. I, it's, it's bad. Don't watch it. Is that the lowest of the year for you? Well, it's not as bad as horse girl. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, it's, uh, yeah. So I've, I I had forgot to add it to my, I just added it to my list. So I forgot to add it because I disliked it so much. (laughs) It was awful. Um, So uh, yeah, the Netflix, man, their rom-coms can be so bad. Um, I'd way rather watch anything that they showed on Hallmark Channel than watch Love Wedding repeat again. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, all right. So Onward, Uh, what did you think of Pixar's Onward? Yeah, um, Onward was uh, definitely a good experience for me. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went into it. I'm like, as I was watching, I'm like, I can't really relate to this. I can't relate to the story of losing a parent. And um, hmm, I don't know how much I should say about this movie. I don't want to give anything too much away. I'll just say that by the end, when you learned the real lesson of the movie, Mm -hmm. I could relate so much to it and it just hit me like it was so unexpected for me. Um, I actually cried quite a bit in the theater when I watched this. So it definitely had an impact on me. I thought it was very funny. Um, There were a few times that I just cracked up, especially like involving the dragon near the end and the dragon's face. (laughs) I'm sure you know what part I'm talking about, but yeah, I, I love this movie. Uh, I, I would definitely recommend this. This is my number one of the year. So oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I really enjoyed this movie as well. I think that I, I, I immediately related to it because I, and I haven't always had the best relationship with my older brother uh, and we're fine, but <laughs> not, I definitely related to the dynamic of these two brothers. Yeah. And, uh, and so that carried me through a lot of the film and I, I just, the whole heart of them wanting to spend one more day with their dad is so, uh, so touching, especially when you, when you know the backstory of Dan Scanlon, the director, and his father dying at an early age and his relationship with his brother, this, this has a huge heart in it. Oh. And I was so surprised by the ending. I thought that it was a very brave ending and very interesting, especially mm-hmm. again, given that backstory, uh, that he would give that up for his brother i thought it was really touching and i i mean it's not perfect i get some of the criticism that the quest is fairly easy for them and uh, it's not all the humor works but enough of it did to entertain me and i thought that chris pratt did a great job in particular with the vocals and so i really enjoyed it i have it at number nine okay um yeah i'm surprised that you don't have it higher to be honest but that's (laughs) That's fair. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did, yeah. I really, I did really enjoy it. I need to watch it again because I've actually only seen it once. I've only right. seen it the one time. I did uh, start it again uh, when it was on Disney Plus, but I think it was pretty late when I did that. So I ended up falling asleep, mm-hmm. but I need to watch it all the way and through I do, again. I feel really bad for, for it. I feel like it got mm-hmm. hurt probably the most out of any major film uh, with the, uh, with the shutdown, the lockdown. Sure. Yeah. 
So, all right. Uh, then we have uh, the uh, Elephant and Dolphins, Dolphin Reef uh, movies. We've been waiting for Dolph- uh, Disney Nature fans have been waiting for Dolphin Reef for forever. They announced it in 2018, and then it kept getting delayed, and then it was released last year in France for some reason. And so we're like, when, when is Dolphins going to come? They're stealing it from us. So they finally release it. And it was really fun. I mean, if you like these these movies, these Disney nature films, then you'll enjoy it. Uh, and, uh, you know, they kind of try to anthropomorphize the uh, the animals a little bit and give them like a name and a story and and whatever. And uh, so, you know, it was it was pretty it was pretty cute. And uh, so I have Dolphin Reef at 31. And then uh, Elephant, uh, this is narrated by Meghan Markle, and she's fine as the narrator. Um, the only thing that hurt Elephant a little bit, why I'd be down uh, below Dolphin for me, is uh, that I, I'd seen the, the Elephant Queen at last year at Sundance, and it was such an amazing documentary. And it was better than this. It would just is. It, it was more interesting. It was less is more for adults i guess but i don't know i just think they did a better job and so i would say watch elephant queen on apple plus it's where it's on watch that over watching elephant on disney plus <laughs> uh, but anyway i have elephant at 34 so not too big a difference but i'd still give positive to to both of them uh for that uh and so let's talk about swallow i've actually seen this movie <laughs> yeah, which you I might be surprised the, by. <laughs> I think I saw you post about seeing it. So, uh-huh. um, yeah, Everybody. this is an interesting one. I I actually want to defer to you. I want to hear what you think first. Yeah, so I did give it a positive review. I I felt like it was so well made. I really thought that that director did a great job in the cinematography and just the soul feel of the house. Really good. I thought Haley Bennett did a great job. Uh, so all of that was definitely, it was worth recommending to me. And it's just such a weird movie. And every time she was like going to eat something, you're like, ah! <laughs> um, but I didn't like that. They tr- over tried to explain her past. I don't think it was needed. I think her situation right then is enough to motivate her to do what she does. We didn't need this sort of this rape backstory. I felt like it kind of was cheap and I just, uh, I, I, so I didn't like that. I didn't like any of that. But that's really my main flaw with the film. I really thought as far as it was just such a tense uh, and well shot, well made, well acted uh, movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll say I did not like it as much as you. Um, uh-huh. I think it would have worked better as a short film. Like if it was, what, 30 minutes? I think mm-hmm. it probably could have... Uh, felt more satisfying um it did seem to drag a bit i mean it it, it definitely made me uncomfortable which i think yeah. was the main goal of the film mm-hmm. um but i think the main goal should have been to entertain and i wasn't always entertained so um yeah i put this at number 23 for the year hmm. see so, i actually have it right now at 26 mm-hmm. which maybe i should have it higher I don't know. I, I just, it was just a weird movie. It was an interesting movie. It was out of my comfort zone uh, to see it right. in the first place. <laughs> um, and, uh, but yeah, I really disliked that whole thing with the whole thing with her dad and dad and yeah. everything. Oh. And they sure, they, I don't, I don't like how it ended either. It, it didn't really give any sort of resolution so yeah. and it was just not needed like there was plenty of motivation for her choices and why she did what she did right there in that house it did not need to yeah anyway so oh well <laughs> is it i would be very curious to see something else from that director because i thought it was very well made as far right. as i agree you know, so um all right uh then we have the willbies and so this is a movie on netflix animated that i was pretty interested in uh because the animation style looks so bright and colorful and that's the biggest strength of the movie but unfortunately i didn't think the script was very good i didn't think the characters were very good i didn't think that the script was very funny uh and some people have liked it and it has a pretty good score i think but 
I don't know. I just didn't, I feel like for this kind of dry deadpan type of humor uh, in a children's story, it needs to be funnier or the characters need to be more memorable. Uh, And so I don't know. I just, I didn't really love it. Uh, I have it at 48 for me on the little bees. Okay. Let's talk about the way back. Okay. Uh, So this is a really interesting movie because Gavin O'Connor, he did warrior, which is a movie that I love. Uh, And uh, here he has this, this movie with, uh, with Ben Affleck, he had done the accountant also with him. And uh, I think that the people, and including myself going in expecting a s- sports movie are going to be a little bit disappointed. In fact, I almost kind of wished that it hadn't even had any of that mm-hmm. uh, because I thought that the, it was almost distracting <laughs> from, uh, from the story of this Ben Affleck character and his alcoholism which I thought that he did. If I had to pick a performance of the year so far, it would probably be him in this movie. I thought he was really good and uh, you know, pretty devastating uh, with the loss of his son. And, and uh, I, I, th- I just emotionally connected with his character. And uh, I thought that it was pretty brutal. I mean, especially if you, you know, with his backstory, if you're him performing this role, I mean, Wow. Uh, so I, this, the sports stuff I could have done without the, the personal stuff I thought was really good. I don't know. What'd you think? Yeah, I, I think you, uh, that's a good analysis there. The sports stuff really didn't come into play too much. I expected yeah. this to be just like another Hoosiers. Yeah. And it did have some similarities to that, but um, really the focus wasn't on the sports team. In fact, we learned hardly anything about hardly yeah. any of those players. Um, but, uh, yeah, for the most part, Ben Affleck was really good in it. Um, I just, uh, I guess it's just not a story that completely compelled me. Um, and I don't really think it had a very good ending. It, uh, it kind of felt incomplete, um, mm. the way it ended. So, and I mean, I guess yeah. that's life. Life doesn't really have, like, you can't tie life up with a bow um well, especially when you're dealing with addiction mm-hmm. it, that's just not uh so yeah i can see that i i want to say michaela watkins i think is her name she it plays her his sister in this movie and mm-hmm. she's a really good little actor i think uh, i mean not little she's a woman but she's a good <laughs> actress supporting actress she was also in Brittany runs a marathon which i did not care for she was really good in it and i feel like i've just keep seeing her in all these roles and she's always really good uh so anyway shout out to (laughs) shout out to michaela way to go (laughs) i think she's she was in brigsby bear which i love that movie Uh, she's a good she's a good actress and uh, she's good in this uh, yeah so okay uh then we have big time adolescence you saw this yeah um well i don't think i said it the way back i had it at 20 Oh, right. I have way back at 13. Okay. Um, Big time adolescence. Yeah, this was something that I was looking forward to. I had bought tickets to go see this at the theater and then they got refunded to me because uh, all of the showings were pulled. But Uh luckily they put this on Hulu. um, So I was able to watch it. Um, Yeah, this is Pete Davidson film. Um, And yeah, it it was pretty entertaining. Um, I... I can't say that I remember everything about it super well, which is kind of sad because it's only Uh been about a month and a half since I've seen it. Um, But I do remember thinking the performances were pretty good. Um, I think they could have taken a little bit further with the the humor and with the heart, I guess. But um, yeah, I put this at number 15. So it's pretty much in the middle for the, for the year for me. Good. Okay. Uh, so then I saw Bad Education. This is on HBO. Mm-hmm. And this stars Hugh Jackman and Allison Janney, a true life story of this uh, superintendent and of <laughs> schools that ends up uh, stealing all of this money from, uh, from the school de- uh, department. And uh, this movie was great. I, he, it's so well written. The script is so tight. I know most people are talking about Jackman out of it, which they deserve it. But the script is the star for me. I thought it was so well done. 
uh, and uh, d- did a good job of being funny and being entertaining while also like taking things seriously, not, not making a joke out of this. Um, and I, I just, I loved this movie. I thought it was great. I thought Hugh Jackman was fantastic. Allison Janney, of course, was great. All the other supporting Ray Romano is really good in it. Another person who keeps putting out really good supporting performances uh, and more like I, they, he was good in the Irishman. He's good in this. He was great in Paddleton last year. So he, he keeps putting out really good performances uh, and he's good in this. And I don't know, it was just such an entertaining movie. And I really liked the girl who played uh, the high school student who kind of starts investigating into all of this. She was really good. Uh, it has the, uh, the, um, the kid from hereditary in in uh in it he's good and it's just i just loved it i have it at number four okay for the year you should definitely check it out it's yeah really this good. this is one that i've been wanting to watch um this was the same director that did thoroughbreds which i i did like thoroughbreds so um yeah, yeah i'll probably watch it fairly soon we'll see yeah it's it's really good okay. uh so he would be the other person that i would put up for it with ben affleck as far as best performance okay. that I've seen so far uh, this year. And, and then Elizabeth Moss, those would uh, be probably my top three. Uh, anyway, uh, so then you saw Bloodshot. Yeah, speaking of best performance of the, uh, of the year, we had Vin Diesel. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be honest. Yeah, this is easily my least favorite of the movies that we're talking about today. Um, which I kind of expected. Um, it It's pretty one note, um, and it feels like a rehashing of a lot of other similar movies we've seen, like Upgrade, um, or that I've seen at least. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it just, it really was a chore to watch this movie. Um, I th- they did have an interesting idea with the plot, um, but just everything was executed poorly. Um, I don't really care for Vin Diesel as an actor. So it just didn't really work for me. I put this at 27. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I almost went to see it because I'm like, well, I should support the theaters or whatever. And that's part of the reason why I ended up seeing Emma three times, though, because I'm like, (laughs) I'm just going to because I didn't want like my last movie I saw in the theater for who knows how long to be bloodshot. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So I was like, oh, it's because of Emma again. Uh, <laughs> so I never saw it. Uh, uh, so then I saw a movie called A Secret Love. This is a movie on Netflix documentary about this couple, this uh, lesbian couple who've been together for 65 years. I'm um, going all the way back to when one of them played uh, baseball uh, in the um, like League of Our Own kind of thing, and uh, and I I thought that this movie was pretty cute. Um, I liked the, uh, I liked the past stuff way better than the current stuff. Cause this current stuff was just kind of like helping them move. And I don't know, it wasn't as interesting to me, uh, but still definitely worth watching. I, uh, I, but I have it right in that middle group of movies. Um, so I have it at 37. Yeah, I've heard about this, but I haven't seen it yet. So it sounds like yeah. something I might check out. Yeah, yeah. And so let's talk about The Hunt. You saw The Hunt. Speaking of the last <laughs> movie we saw in the theater. Yeah. <laughs> that is The Hunt for me. Do you live um, with regret or are you glad that was the no, last I'm, one? No, I, I will say I am glad I watched it because I, I did have a lot of fun with this one. Good. Um, yeah, it it was definitely uh, pretty over the top with uh, some of the gore in this film. Um, one thing that I really liked about it is that nobody was safe. Um, mm-hmm. If you don't watch the trailer, you might not have a good idea of who the lead character is going to be. And just when you think somebody is going to be your main character, they might end up getting killed off. So, mm-hmm. And it definitely... Uh, I thought it was going to be kind of uh, anti-Republican or anti-Trump followers because it's about these people hunting the deplorables. But really, it doesn't paint either political party in a a good light. 
So um, yeah, you can hate on both of them equally, <laughs> Democrats and Republicans alike. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I thought it was a lot of fun. I, I would be excited to watch a sequel if they ever do that. Mm -hmm. So I put this at seven for the year. Cool, good. Uh, all right, then the last one that I saw that you didn't have on your list is a movie called Crip Camp. This I saw at Sundance. This on Netflix now. Uh, this is a movie about, uh, ostensibly about this camp of made for people with disabilities that they could go to in the late 70s and 80s, I, I believe. Um, and, uh, or maybe earlier, I can't remember. But uh, yeah, in, oh, I guess the early 70s early 70s um but the movie really isn't about that it's not really about the camp it's about basically a history of the people with disabilities movement and how they got it uh, the, the legislation and those things passed and particularly about this one woman who had polio and uh and so she, that's how why she had the disabilities she had um she was amazing awesome lady i, I wish i could remember her name but she was really cool and uh and just the history of the whole movement is basically the movie which was very interesting i kind of would have liked to have learned a little more about the camp uh but nevertheless uh it's uh, it's definitely a movie everybody should watch it's very inspiring and uh so but i have it a 20 in my ranking okay yeah and so last let's <laughs> talk about <laughs> The, the the movie that could could <laughs> could destroy movies forever <laughs> who knew knew uh with trolls world tour that's this this divide between universal and amc and everything going crazy um but what did you think of trolls world tour okay well first of all i want to say i'm very happy that universal decided to release this on video on demand I, yeah I, I thought that was a good move um especially with losing so many movies I was looking forward to, um, especially A Quiet Place. Ugh. Another I know, movie I had bought a I ticket know. for and I had plans to see it and then it got yes. refunded. Oh, it was man. canceled the day before the screening, like uh, that, that we were supposed to go on Monday. And then like, I think the, um, the, uh, the, the NBA stuff happened like that weekend before. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, ba I mean, barely missed it. Oh, yeah. I know somebody who saw a screening of it in New York uh -huh. before it was uh, pulled. So I have a friend who saw one there. in, in uh, Australia. Uh, they saw it randomly there a little bit early. But yeah, I know. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> but, <laughs> but going back yeah. to Trolls, uh, Trolls World Tour. Well, first of all, I watched the uh, first movie. I rewatched that with uh -huh. my roommate and... It's such a good movie. I really like the first Trolls a lot. Um, uh -huh. It's I think it's a movie everybody should check out. This movie is not as good, but it still was very entertaining for me. And visually, like, how can you not be, like, compelled to watch that and just drawn in by this world that they've created? Um, yeah, I thought it was a lot of fun. The plot was just... Mm -hmm. it, the plot was just kind of there, you know? Mm -hmm. The music is is the main appeal and the visuals yeah uh, but overall i would say that i was entertained and i would definitely watch it again mm -hmm. so i put this at number six. Ooh, very good okay uh for me this movie is right for me this movie is right in that middle camp at ground where i'm like right on the edge mm -hmm. of it i agree the animation is beautiful i absolutely loved the animation uh, and I think that some of the covers were good. I think they had made some really odd choices. I mean, for a movie made in 2020, like their examples of pop music are like <laughs> Hammer Time and, and the Spice Girls. Uh, that seems strange to me. Um, also, K Kelly Clarkson is not a country singer. I mean, maybe she's done a few mm -hmm. songs, but come on. Out of all the country singers, that's the one you pick for your big... Like, what? That was weird. Like, why is Reba McIntyre in Spies in Disguise and not in Trolls? <laughs> like, <laughs> she even has red hair. Like, what? Um, but all of that is nitpicks. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I, the thing I, I think I wish they had done in this movie to make me love it uh, is that the thing I didn't like about the original one is I felt like, why does everybody have to like the same stuff? 
why does branch have to like doing the dancing and doing the singing and doing the like why can't you like whatever he likes Mm -hmm. and i didn't like that and so here in this movie you have a chance to basically have a message to kids that all music is great and that you can like whatever music you want but they didn't do that (laughs) All they did was reinforce that they could keep liking, that these people could keep, the pop music could be in pop music land. What they should have done is had Branch and Poppy like learning to love all these different kinds of music. And here, and uh, and you could have Poppy listening to classical music and then listening to, um, and listening to country music and listening to, and that like all music is, is good. And it's okay to like whatever you want to like and be unique and be an individual. And I wish that they had done that. I think it would have been so much better, but it's a harmless movie. I'm right on the edge on it. (laughs) Um, And, but I thought the the original songs were way not as good as the first movie. There was nothing that's close to as memorable as Can't Stop the Feeling. Oh, that's true. That's true. And I don't think it had that moment like uh, when they did True Colors in the first yeah. one. Yeah. And um, it was weird the way that they just got rid of the um, the Bergens. Oh, they yeah. Were just, <laughs> that was strange. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what is this world? I don't know. But, um, but it's harmless, perfectly fine for kids. Uh, but I have it at 38. Like I said, it's oh. right in that, that middle area. Um, Low <laughs> Um, so yes, so my favorite movie so far this year that I've seen, um, my favorite is Emma. My second favorite is from Sundance called Dick Johnson is Dead, which is so good. I can't wait till everyone gets to see it. A movie called Save Yourselves, which I can't wait until they release because it's like so relevant and hilarious. Um, and then Bad Education, Timmy Failure, Mistakes Were Made. And then I have McMillions, which isn't really a movie, but I loved it so much. Uh, Sean the Sheep movie, Farmageddon, My Hero Academia, Heroes Rising, Onward, and then a movie from Sundance called Nine Days. That's my top 10. Okay. Um, my top 10, um, I'll go backwards. Uh, 10 is The Lodge, and then nine is the Troop uh, Zero. Tro- yeah, Troop Zero. Troop Zero. Um, eight is Extraordinary. Um, seven is The Hunt. Six, Trolls World Tour. Five, Emma. Four, The Invisible Man. Three, Come to Daddy. Two, Birds of Prey. And one, Onward. Very good. All right. Well, we did it. And uh, let us know what you would like us to talk about because we can't really do our normal (laughs) show anymore uh, after this. So let us know (laughs) if you have any ideas. We'll try to think of some ideas (laughs) because I enjoy meeting and talking uh, for exorbitant long periods of time with David. (laughs) (laughs) Always fun. (laughs) Yes. So where can people find you if they want to follow you on social media? Okay. Uh, Yeah, you can find me on Twitter. I am the David Healy. Um, You can also find both of us on Facebook in a group called Film Freaks. It is facebook.com slash film freaks group. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. And I'm still trying to do reviews as much as I can. And uh, so take a look at the, all of that. And also you can find lots of coverage of all kinds of stuff at the Hallmarkies podcast. So take a listen to that. And we have a new podcast called the Francast, which I'm really excited about. That's covering the nanny every episode. Each, uh, <laughs> we're, we're doing, uh, uh, we're podcasting about it and it's really fun. So check that out as well. And so thanks so much, David. This was really fun. And uh, we will, we'll have to figure out something to talk about again. Definitely. Later. Okay. Bye everyone. Bye.